G'day guys. It's the moment you've been waiting for. Get excited, I'm excited. Welcome to our house. Welcome to the Cartwrights. We're a family of five traveling to the most remote places our beautiful country has to offer in our home on wheels. It's not just any home though. In our humble little opinion, we think it's the coolest house in Australia. You know why? Because we go anywhere in this thing, whether it be the beach or the bush, the outback, the desert, or even the mountaintops. Anywhere we go, you just know you're gonna find us somewhere in the thick of it. Our dream since the day my husband and I met has been to touch all corners of this land. And now, to be able to share it with our children makes us pinch ourselves every bloody day. How else do we put it? We love our life and we truly believe we're the luckiest and happiest people on the planet. Sharing this dream of ours, we really wouldn't have thought that so many would be interested. But the support from our community has now prompted us to share more. So, as promised, here's our life. Buckle up and we hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Today, guys, I'm going to run you through our 75 155 Isuzu Crew Cab. If you follow us on our socials, you know we get around. We're touring Australia. We have been for a long time. We will continue for a long time. This is half our house. This is basically what we live out of every day. So not only am I going to show you through the truck today, I'm going to show you, show you what we load it with and basically the gear we need, or we assume we need, to get uh, to some of the places we go to. And the best part about it, about it is we've paid for every single thing that's gone into this. So I'll give you an honest rundown of each thing. I'll give you reviews on what we've got. And basically it'll be a detailed, honest opinion of what's needed to do what we do. Right, guys let's jump into it we'll jump straight into the front of the truck basically out of the factory um, standard colors we've got this it's just literally called gray no wrap no nothing straight out of the factory that's how she comes but uh, all terrain warriors which is basically who we got most of the build done through it was just easier for us to sort of hand it over to one mob we purchased the vehicle through them uh, and pretty much they project managed the whole build from start to finish someone like me that's a little bit time poor it was easier to do that way and as it turned out it was perfect like we literally a couple of phone calls you know everything ran pretty smoothly considering we bought this thing in the middle of covid so yeah they did really well on anything everything so they have these bars they've got a couple of different bar options the bigger the hoop the bigger the hoe i'm as far as i'm concerned they have like more slimline ones that just uh just have the base here they're all winch compatible basically there's a couple of bolts here you pull them straight out and you can change the winch or whatever you need to do uh, as you see fit. But we currently don't have a winch in ours. Uh, I'll explain that a bit later. But we've had a few issues with the winch that originally was installed, but we're changing up and we're going something with something new. We'll get into that a bit later. We've got uh, Nava Ultimas, yeah, MK2s, and Nava Light Bars up the top that work well in with this uh, cab bar work that basically ties in to the to the top rack as well. So basically you've got protection for the cab from the very back of the truck and rolls over to the front and it also houses our GME aerials. Now we've got our cellular antenna on this side. Basically that's just a cellular booster, remote places, you're driving along. It gives you a couple of extra uh, bars, I guess. But if you've got no reception at all, then it's basically useless. Most of the time we have it turned off because we have Star we have Starlink and we don't, I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I don't like waves bouncing around in the cab around my kid's head. So I uh, most of the time it's turned off. Do you need it? Not really. We haven't used it as much as we thought we would, especially with Starlink coming out these days. It's um, it's useful, but it's not a necessity. So if you need to skip it, skip it. UHF. Just uh, we run the uh, XRS system in the cab. In my opinion, that's the best system there is. It's all in your hand, all on the handheld, easy to change. You know, if you've back and forth, volume up, it's, um, it just seems to be the simplest. You're not reaching down, turning dials, or reaching up, turning dials. It's all on the handheld. A piece of piss, really. We've got basically 
a good thing about your truck is we've got stock standard mirrors no need for the extra clear views that slide out or anything like that basically you can see everything and ever, anything and everything out of these things there are stock standard you can see to the back of the van we if you know who we are we tow 25 foot van which is quite long to be towing and i can see everything i still tend to reverse myself into danger if you've seen our recent episodes but it works the step so all terrain warriors are uh, do a super single conversion so basically they take the little wheels off it put big single wheels off it the back comes with dual wheels and the front they change just from the little wheel to the bigger legs because no one likes to have skinny legs. To do so, they modify the front step. So obviously the front step comes back a little bit further normally and they just chop him, bend him up, weld him up. It just, it still allows for you to step up into the cab with a step there, but it also stops you collecting the front step with your tires. While we are talking about the super single conversion, basically there's a couple of different wa different mobs that are doing it these days. All Terrain Warriors seem to have a package where they do the par parabolics, they do Oztec shocks, or you can get an upgraded kit of King's Remote Resi shocks as well. So I'm happy to say that going through All Terrain Warriors for the parabolics, for the upgraded King's kit, yeah, I'm really happy with their work. It smooths the ride as well. So anyone that doesn't know, this is a cab over, which basically means the cab's over your front axle, which is notoriously bumpy. With this upgraded kit, it's a lot more comfier ride. It's still a bumpy, bumpy ride, still an adventure, but it's a lot more comfortable for the family uh, having this upgraded kit in there. In the back, we have, again, King's Remote Resi shocks, Ultram Warriors parabolic suspension with an airbag helper kit in the back. Just because we are towing, you know, a four-ton caravan, it's easy just to pump the airbags up and down to suit the weights that's needed when we do hook up, excuse me. So this is where we do inflate the bags from. I just, we hook our compressor up, our compressor hose up to this front rear, run the same PSI. It's not, there's nothing fancy like in cab switches and like pumps themselves up and all that sort of stuff. Like on a truck, and it's one of the things that sold us on the truck is everything's simple. There's no major electronic computers. There's no hectically fancy gear that I can't fix, if that makes sense. So basically, any sort of bush mechanic, any sort of bloke with half an idea touring in these trucks can work on them when you're in some strife. Moving back from the front, we've got two starter batteries. It's a 24 volt truck. So just keep that in mind when you're throwing accessories on the back of it. For example, I think GCI Traytech, the mob that did our canopies, it was probably the second truck that they've done when we got this done. So they threw 12 volt actuators into the central locking, which made the actuator wanted punch holes in the side of the canopy, which was not ideal. So you just got to keep that in mind when you're throwing accessories on these trucks. Here we've got the standard fuel tank. It's 140 liters, comes stock standard with that. We've added another one to the other side of the truck. So we carry 280 liters of fuel plus Jerry's when we want to. Underbody storage lockers. Basically, this is our uh, compressor setup in here. We've got hoses, miscellaneous parts, tire deflators, things like that. I am uh, possibly in the top half a percent of people that deflate and inflate their tires in the country. Um, we're up and down all day, every day. So basically what we've got in here is two ARB twin compressors. As you can tell by my uh, my mechanics here, the ARB compressors were just not cutting it. Now, I don't know if it's whether they couldn't get us to a constant 100 PSI without overheating or whether it was wired up wrong by ARB constantly, but they just weren't working. So we've gone with this big bad boy, which is, Humongous. Look out, water! This thing here is not only going to be able to pump up the truck tires, it's tried and tested by other touring truck drivers. I don't know what you call them, but it's been tried and tested before. It's meant to be a weapon, and we've got a couple of things coming up in the near future where we need the extra get up and go, and this compressor is going to do it for us. Wheels. Now we've got the Founder Mud Terrains, 305, 70R, 19 and a half inch rims, steel rims that is. This is where having super singles sometimes can be difficult. So I know Black Bears make a lot of good tires. The issue with most tires on super singles is it drops your GVM and your GCM. I wanted to keep full weights or the full capacities that I could. I'm pretty sure my options were basically Founders, you've got good rides, which is basically, in my opinion, ugly. Um, and plus the touring that we do, mud terrain's not that bad. We're never on blacktop anyway, so it works. There are, uh, I think, I just changed these tires out. They made it to 30,000 Ks, I think, which isn't much. And they probably had another 10,000 in them, but we were flogging them. I had slashes in them. I had, you know, 
chunks of grip missing everywhere. In terms of a review on the tires, they're not the greatest, but your options are limited. Um, I think they're the best option on the market if you want to keep your GVM at seven and a half ton. I think every, at the time we bought this vehicle, I'm pretty sure everything that you can could get other than that dropped your GVM. Another good thing about touring in a truck, I guess, is the wheel indicators. We've traveled with a couple of families now who have had wheel nuts come loose, wheels come off. You gotta check your wheel nuts, especially when you're driving as much as people on the road are driving. It's super easy for us, we just check the, uh, the indicators. I just do a quick walk around before we travel, every time we travel. So it, it literally is problem solved for us. We don't have to get a torque wrench out, we just have a look. And uh, it's literally a 30 second task. Obviously max track extremes, we're heavy. So if you're going to go anything other than max tracks, you're gonna be replacing the max trucks a lot, especially if you're doing the sort of touring that we're doing. We've actually just re recently replaced ours because I don't know if anyone's seen, but I tend to, I got stuck in the middle of the desert and it wasn't much fun getting out and I trashed my tracks. Basically the way I've mounted them, I've just used the max tracks pins, fixed them to the side of the canopy. That locks them in. We normally put a lock in there because they're expensive. I don't want people nicking my tracks. Bush Company awning, the 180 degree XT awning. Um, so she swings out, she covers the full length of the tray, full length of the canopies, covers part of the door. It throws as much shade as we need and it's super quick, super sturdy. Basically tough, tough as nails. And it's it's super quick for me to set up by myself. It's easy, you got kids screaming, you got, you know, kids are hungry, you pull up on the side of the road, you pull up on the beach, you fly, throw that thing out, instant shade, no one's getting burnt, it's great. Porter potty holder. This is super handy. We don't want to be digging holes in the bush. I've got a young family. I've got a wife when we're out remote. It's just easy to pull the porta potty out, throw it in the shower tent on the other side. It's a nice holder for it outside so you don't have your porta potty rolling around inside the canopy. Um, that's a good little addition. I, I really like that one. Spare tire holder. So basically, spare tire sits on the back here. It's tightened off just with this nut here, but integrated into it is a ladder. So that drops down folds down like that. Access to the roof, access to my boat. I even use that, I don't even use, because of the way the boat comes off on the winch, I don't even use, what you normally have to do is throw like a plate, like sorry, like a H plate and an extender bar out of your tow ball. I don't have to do that. I rest it on the back of the ladder and it just flips over and comes down. Jerry can holder, we normally just store water in that. Um, the diesel goes in the back. Any, any diesel jerrys we have go in the back of the truck, I struck them down and whatnot. Um, this is a new addition here, the, a stone stomper. We had rock tamers, it just didn't seem to be doing the job, especially with the amount of rocks that this, this truck seems to throw on dirt roads, which is attached to a shocker hitch. Now, basically, ummed and art about what hitch to use. My personal opinion, you've got the Gen Y hitch and the shocker hitch are the only two you would probably use, especially when you're towing a big vehicle with a big vehicle. Um, what it does, it just has its own independent air suspension within the hitch. So any bumps that you go over, it basically separates your towing load from the towing vehicle. So it will suspend independently rather than you know, moving together as one. For me, you can't go past an airbag suspension, no matter what it is. So instead of going with the Gen Y hitch, I went with the Shocker hitch just for that reason alone. I just don't think you can go past air suspension when it comes to towing loads and things like that. It's a super smooth ride and it, uh, it's just my opinion, but uh, it just feels like it tows better. All Train Warriors rear bar, rear tow bar, four and a half ton tow bar. Got an integrated winch cradle with a Sherpa 20,000 pound winch in the back. We had a 20,000 pound winch in the front as well, but basically what happened was four months ago, we had an issue with it. We've been back and forth with Sherpa. They warranted it within a week. Like they basically said, yeah, no worries. We'll, we'll help you troubleshoot, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is with Sherpa is you can't contact them. You, I can't call them, you can't speak to a real person, you have to email them. Trying to troubleshoot a part with no service centers in the middle of nowhere, just the customer service wasn't there with them. It's now been four months, we still don't have a winch. They sent us one last week. The one they sent was broken. Um, and basically we contacted them again. To their credit, they got back to us within one or two days and said, we'll send you another one. But it's just too far gone. I can't be putting or advertising or you guys seeing me with a product that basically I, I don't have faith in anymore, just their customer service wasn't there. So we're, we're looking at carbon winches. I'm gonna throw a carbon winch in the front and the back. I've already spoken to the guys there. It's heaps easier 
to get a hold of someone, talk to someone about issues and things like that. And on the road, you need that sort of reliability or that sort of serviceability because things break, I get it. I'm not blaming anyone for, like it probably was me, the reason it broke, but the issue is more so we need serviceability and it just wasn't there with Sherpa, unfortunately. And in saying that, we've spoken to a lot of traveling families with those winches that have had the same problems. Steady work lights. Super handy for when you're backing onto your trailer at night or trying to see when you're backing into a site at night. It throws a lot of light. You can honestly, it lights up. Whole area you're trying to back into, they're super handy. Darche shower tent, basically that folds down. She comes out, we fold her out, sits on the back of the vehicle here, out, out of the way on the opposite side to what we would call the kitchen side. It's basically where we shower, toilet, all that sort of stuff when we're, we don't have our caravan with us. Perched up on top of the canopies, we've got a 376 Mako Craft topper. We picked this boat just because, mainly for me, it's because of its lower profile, lower side profile. I mean, you see a lot of touring rigs get around with the higher sides now, it's probably great for croc territory and it's probably great for fishing and things like that. But I, I wanted one straight line from the front of the cab to the back. I didn't want to have my boat the right way up, upside down, right. You know, there's lots of different configurations, but I just wanted from the top of the GME aerials, I wanted one straight line, one straight height the whole way back. It's loaded on top of an Almac boat loader. Basically, it's winched down. So what happens is you tie ropes on the back and you hook it up to the loader, you hook it up to the boat, push a button on the winch and it lowers it back, flips it over, it comes down, places it on the ground behind you, you throw the motor on and off you go. I hear a lot of feedback from people saying it takes too long, this and that. It doesn't, it takes me 15 minutes to get it all sorted, set. If you're living this lifestyle and you're in that much of a hurry that you can't spend 15 minutes setting your boat up, or oh. got something wrong with you. It's perfect for what we want, perfect for what we need. However, I do think we're strongly outnumbered with the way we mount our boat, but I don't care. I'm still fighting the good fight. Don't worry about it. The boat's held down by a couple of different anchor points at the front. It's got some turnbuckles that I've just mounted through the, the rails of the canopy underside. Tighten the turnbuckles, it straps the boat right down to the uh, to the canopy. And on the back, it's basically, I think they're, they're called, I don't know what they're called. They're basically a lever latch, heavy duty lever latch. You pull the lever latch down and it locks it in place and you just screw a little hook to the boat and basically, and then the winch, you tighten the winch rope and the winch rope holds it down as well. No need for straps, no need for yucky, ugly things. The rig looks sick that way. It's one of the conditions actually, I could have a boat if there was no straps attached to it because it was too ugly. Compromises, compromises lads. And while we're on the boat, the Almac loader, it all also has a caged bottom. So we throw our swags up there under the boat. We've got a tube for towing the kids around up under the boat. We've got oars, we've got an esky. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we fit up there as well. So that Almac boat rack is uh, has been super handy. It's powder coated black, ties in with the rig well. It all works, Mickey Mouse. There you have the, the second fuel tank. And I suppose while we're here, we'll talk about the uh, the way the tanks work, how I swap between tanks. So they basically don't fill each other. And I'm not quite sure of the terminology, they don't. They're separate tanks. They have their own fuel filters and each tank runs through like basically their own separate filter. This is what we were talking about, about ease of use with a truck. There's nothing fancy about them. I can literally look at the fuel filters, see if it's contaminated, see what's going on. I can drain the bottom and I can see which tank, if I filled up in different locations, which tank's the problem tank, what's going on. It's just ease of use again, basically, and I can swap them out myself just there. It's super easy. The way the tanks work is on the dash, there's a switch, left and right tank, simple as that. And I just switch between which tank. Once one gets empty, I flick it over, 280 litres of fuel. Moving on from the fuel filters, we've got uh, all train warriors keep the standard air filter in it with, uh, and they just add a snorkel with an intake at the top, raise it up just uh, for obvious reasons to get it up out of the way when we're doing crossings and whatnot. You don't want water down your snorkel. Diff breathers are raised up and thrown in the back of the cab there. You can't really see them. I'll try and get up there under there for you. And then we've got up top. So we've got two chaos boxes that sit up top. Um, they're basically the nicest, blackest ones we could find. These boxes, they store, driver side one stores chainsaws, firewood, oils for accessories and the other side stows all our boat stuff, so our life jackets, etc., our tow ro towing ropes, things like that, well, and our diving gear. All right, rooftop tent time. Looks like I'm going for a climb, eh? <laughs> so on top of the rooftop tent, we've got a 240 watt solar panel that was fitted by Solar and Sat up in Bundy. We also got our surfboards, we couldn't leave them behind for 
Mate, I'm not going around Australia and not trying to catch a wave. Whether I can or I can't, I'm still gonna try. Basically, you flip the two clips up and the gas, you lift it up a little bit and the gas struts, basically, once it gets to a certain height, take over. We leave it set up at all times, so all we're gonna do is flip him open, open the front door, roll him up, and you're good to go. It's got cigarette points, you can plug your Sirocco fans in there, you can basically set your whole bedroom up in there. It's got all the nooks and crannies and hidey holes that you would require. It's got a lot of ventilation. Once you uh, open up all the sides, there's air for days. In terms of rooftop tents, they're heavy, but they look hectic when, they've, when they're closed up. They look hectic when they're open. They're super sturdy, super reliable. Um, you can't really go past them. There's lots of tents on the market that are great, but I do believe the Bush Company are leading the way when it comes to rooftop tents. I think that's it for outside. Let's jump in the cab, eh? I'll meet you in there. So the cab's super simple, like super, super simple. It's like, I would almost compare it to a 79. The only difference is it's got way more space. In terms of knobs and accessories and fancy things, non-existent. What we've got basically is a Red Arc Topo over here just by the uh, the driver's side door. That's what we use to adjust the brakes and whatever we're towing. So pretty much over a certain limit trailer towing, you need, the trailer needs its own brakes. This here is a system that allows us to adjust those brakes, whether they come on harder, softer, whatever is required based on the, of the trailer. This is the switch that I was talking about for the tanks, left and right tank. One drains, you switch him over and you start using the other tank just because, as I said, they're not integrated, they stand alone. They're, they're two individual tanks that you fill up. We've got all our headlight switches here. So basically the top two here, top two switches here, they, the headlights, so the ones on the bull bar, the ones up on the light bars up on the, uh, on the bar work on the roof. Four wheel drive, low range, high range, um, cruise control. Then we've got the XRS, the GME XRS, and this, this is what I was talking about earlier. Basically, everything you need is on the unit or on the handheld part of the unit itself. You don't need to reach down, turn any knobs, adjust, look at a small screen down the bottom. It all comes up on an easy to use screen, and basically it's up and down to change channel, up and down for the volume, and then to find any other setting, it's super easy as well. It's really self-explanatory. Most units are, but I really like how that one works. It's just super obvious. There's no issues at all. Both the driver's side and the passenger side both have these overhead units. I saw my sunnies here. Um, got manuals, I'm pretty sure I've got extra sunglass cases and holders. Yeah, so they're the overhead lockers. Mum over here likes to store a purse and other makeup items up the top there. Whatever you Sheila's like to use, I'm not quite sure. Simple quad lock, that holds my phone. Um, I've always got HEMA maps up on that phone. That's what I use to navigate. We've been doing this for a long time and I haven't really found the need for any other sort of GPS devices. I know they're a lot more intricate and things like that, but I just haven't had the need to do it. Above my head is our hat holders. Basically, they just swivel down. There's one above uh, the camera as well, but they pull down, hat goes in, launches back up, and just a spring-loaded system here at the back keeps them nice and maintained. We've got a AMT, which it's not a manual, it's not an auto, it's somewhere in between closer to an automatic. If I was to recommend anyone buying one of these vehicles, I would recommend a manual. The truck can't see what's in front of you and then it's also geared in a way that is for complete fuel economy. So it will change gears, especially when you're towing as well, it really affects it and off-road is where you feel it the most. But it wants to change gears in a way that the engine just labors and is like has no, will not let it rev out, it will not let it pick up momentum. It's a, it's a really, in my, my opinion, and I'm a builder, not a mechanic, my biggest gripe with the whole vehicle is the AMT. I would much rather, if I had my time again, to go manual. The engine is a 5.2 litre four cylinder engine. It's probably got half to two thirds the power, I suppose your standard 300 out of the box would have. It's not the most powerful vehicle in the world. Pull the trailer and everything into places that I don't think many other vehicles would. But in terms of get up and go, it just doesn't have the same amount as what uh, those standard, well definitely not any of your American trucks, definitely not a Land Cruiser, but it still, it still does gets the job done. So the head unit is just your standard Isuzu head unit. Nothing fancy about it at all. It's touchscreen. it's got everything you need. Again, these trucks are so basic that 
they don't come with aircon in the back. The aircon is only in the front. Now you can get aircon vents put in the back of, back of the cab. Now, if I was to have my time over again, that is something I would do. To tell you the truth, I don't know why I didn't do it. It was a massive oversight. Um, it was brought up to me while we were doing the build and I just, I don't know. I don't have an excuse for it, but the kids are constantly into me. Dad, turn the air on up. We've kept the standard bench seat in the front. You can upgrade these seats and All Terrain Warriors do a package where you can get Stratos seats or Shillman seats put in either both the driver's seat and the passenger seat and then they make up a center console as well. We opted not to do that. The reason being this is a seven seater. We plan on having more kids on the road and we wanted to maintain the seven seats. I have not heard one complaint from my missus about it. It's not, it's a non-issue for us. We haven't upgraded the seats. We don't, turns out we don't need the upgrade. She suits, it suits her just fine and we get Evie in the front a little girl in the front every now and then too and she rides shotgun with us. Because we've been in this thing for so long, I've had the opportunity to trial both the Stratos seat and Stratos, Stratos, whatever it's called, Stratos, and the Shillman. The Stratos is a suspension seat. It's a lot higher than the Shillman. Obviously you can adjust the headrest, but the whole seat sits a lot higher and even your bum sits higher up out off the, I suppose, the floor of the, of the vehicle so basically when you're sitting in your seat you're more elevated i didn't personally like it does that mean it's a bad seat no i'm a bigger fella i'm a wider fella i'm a longer fella it just might not be for me but it's something to take into consideration because as soon as i got the shulman seat it's chalk and cheese a lot of fellas put these in the 79 series builds that they do to upgrade the chairs and i'm guessing there's good reason that they do because it's super comfy righto let's swing into the back hello Another added feature or another bonus about having a vehicle like this is the sheer amount of room we've got going on back here. I can literally stand up or crouch down while I'm looking after the kids or whatever's going on in the background. We've got back in the back seat. It's a full bench seat, all one big seat with lots of storage underneath. Underneath the seat, lots of leg room. The kids get their feet up on this center wall here up on the engine bay thing here. It, it's super, super spacious. Four anchor points that All Terrain Warriors fitted for us, so it doesn't come with anchor points. You gotta fit them. We've got four child seat anchor points fitted in the back. Four kids, four young children sitting in the back and one in the front. In cab insulation, we got um, sound deadening put into it throughout the whole cab and the uh, cell fire sits under this seat here at the back, which is why we don't often have it turned on unless we really, really need it. The GCI canopy, my humble opinion, but GCI and the way they do things and their finishes and just their attention to detail is first class. It's top of the line. It's the reason we went for them. The price is up there, but for what you get out of these things and we don't have technology in the front of the truck, so we really needed a place that, well, you'll see. I'll open her up. Here you go. So, this is the brain side. Basically what we've got, this is, we've got a 200 lithium, 200 amp BTEC lithium battery that sits down behind here underneath the uh, the false floor here. And that powers this whole side. So, well, powers the whole canopy basically, but it's all fed through this side. We've got a sign marine display unit so I can see what's going on at all times. I know, I know exactly what my battery's doing, what's my state of charge, how much charge I'm getting in from the solar, how much charge I'm getting in from the grid whatever the go is. Now, if I'm flying through this and you don't really understand it, basically put, this is what powers our truck and powers our life. We're not ever plugged into electricity. So this here makes the power that you have in your house, in your standard house. It turns battery powder power into 240 and is a monitoring system so that we can observe what's going on because it's not like living in a house where you just flick a switch and it's all good, ready to go. Living like this comes with its challenges and this makes it simple. Basically, we've got the fridges, lights, drawer, water pump. We've got our DC to DC charger. Now, before I do get too far into this, this package is put together 
by GCI Trade Tech. It's unique to GCI Trade Tech. I don't think you can purchase anything like it anywhere else. Enerdrive do their own kind of packages, but I don't think that they look as good as this. I think the way GCI is doing it, it's gorgeous, it really is. It's basically our charging hub for all our camera gear, drone gear. Uh, you can see I've got my drone chargers mounted up here. They're constantly charging. Drone mini charger here. DC to DC, so basically when I turn my engine on, and if you already know what these things are, bear with us, but when I turn the engine on, that turns the power from the engine into charge for the battery. So it charges the 200 amp lithium battery that we've got underneath the false floor here. Then you've got a 2000 watt inverter. So that inverter is what converts battery power into 240 power, which basically means I can plug any household appliance into any one of these power points and it'll work because that inverter is turning the power from the battery into 240 power. Right up the back there, I don't think you can see it, but it's our, uh, it's just your standard uh, charger. You plug into the grid and you can throw anywhere up to 60 amps of charge into that, 60 amps an hour of charge into the house battery. A couple of letdowns from this particular system, right? So you turn the engine on and the DC to DC charge uh, fires up. You can set that to any sort of amperage of charge that you want. Um, and a driver good like that. But let's just say that you're putting the max amount of charge from your engine into that DC to DC. There's no separate solar controller. So basically the solar that you're getting in on the roof is wasted. It's gone nowhere. So what, because they run it through the DC to DC. So what, we're, what I've done is I've got two Victron MPPT charges installed up the back. Solar and Sat in Bundaberg did that for us. What they've also done is hooked another one of those solar controllers up to the Anderson plug outlet that was already pre-wired in by GCI Trade Tech. So what I've got is a Red Arc 300 watt blanket that gets stored in this bad boy right here. I unfold that, I throw that out. I've got an extra 300 watts of solar coming in. Basically, with the solar that I've got going on top, it's just not enough sometimes. It's enough to maintain, it's not enough to uh, replenish, um, especially when we've got freezers going and whatnot. So that extra 300 watts gets us up to about 30 amps average on a decent day of solar power going into the system. And it allows, if I need it, to turn the engine on and get power from the engine, from the solar, or when we're driving along, I'm getting solar and engine uh, charge put back into the battery. I've also got all my circuit uh, breakers here. So if anything trips, I know what's going on. Uh, fuses, everything's easy to get to, easy to understand. For a dumbass like me, it helps me get through the day, um, especially when you need to know what's going on in these sort of, in when, when you live like this. We've got a dimmer for the lights out here. So on the canopy doors, We've got white light, orange light, and they're both dimmable. They're dimmable from this, this right here, this little switch right here. Up top, now this is advertised as a table rack. We use it as a storage rack. So as you can see, I've got my drone, my DJI batteries on charge, pegs, tie down straps, all sorts of accessories in there. In this crash pad bag, I've got mozzie repellents, Anderson cables, leftover fuses and whatnot. This crash pad is camera gear. This one up here, I've just got uh, winch controllers. I've got the boat loader controller going on. I've got boat cables. Everything has its place. Um, and then underneath, I've just stuck our GoPros. It's just, because it's close to the charging port, it's just easy to plug them in as we're going. I've got ARB storm bags. Next, we've got the Julka hot tap. So this is our hot water system that we use when we're not with the caravan, when we're off grid camping or whatever it is that we're doing in places that we can't get the caravan to. So this basically slides out. From here, I unstrap this strap here. I pop the hot water system off and this arm swings out. Once that arm swung out, I can then put this back nozzle here down through this groove and swing him around towards the shower tent. Have a cool draw fridge. This thing is, out of all the fridges that we've got on this rig in our caravan, this one's my favorite. We run it as a freezer, so all our frozen meat for off-grid goes into this thing. I'll slide him open for you. She's a bit empty at the moment, and it complements this section down here really well. It's just one main sticker wall where we can put all our memories of where we've been up on there. We've run out of space, so we've moved into the other side of the canopy, but 
It's not the point. Now this drawer here is the biggest drawer you've ever seen in your entire life. I don't even know how they make runners that can hold this sort of capacity. But if that's not the biggest storage drawer you've ever seen in your life, I have literally stood and like, I've not stood, sat in this thing fully open. It's incredible. That's it for this side. Let's do the other side. I'm actually gonna turn the truck around because the setting sun is blaring in on us and I can't see a thing while I'm trying to explain something to you. Righto, the main attraction. This is my favorite part. Boom, baby. Before I get too far into it, it's another added bonus of these trucks. And yeah, you can throw an airbag kit in it and lower it down and how far do we want to go? It's just an added bonus. Now, I'm not saying that the going the other way is the wrong way to go. I'm just saying this works like this. We, sw we flick this one open, basically. We open this drawer and this is our kitchen. So I just want to say we do all our cooking outside we don't actually have a kitchen in our caravan if it's pissing down rain we have an induction cooker that will have some spaghetti bowl or something easy inside but that's it this is what we have smeg pod coffee machine toaster this is our travel oven uh, i've got a kick-ass oven review on that it's not great get a travel buddy the kick-ass one's average jaffle maker microwave we've got our upright bushman fridge with our australian map on the front want a beer been a splendid camera, camera woman so far. Cheers, big ears. I might have one too. Where's mine? I've lost mine. Anyway, upright Bushman fridge, freezer in the top. She's pretty empty because we've uh, just done a large stint out in the desert. So I haven't had any other fridges uh, other than Bushman, so I can't give you a relatable review, but works great. This is our pantry. Slide this out. We normally have all our washing up detergents and stuff in the front, spices. Hey, the thing about this is I can have that open whether I'm working on the kitchen side over here, on the cooktop side over here, or the kitchen side, access the fridge. I've got everything right here. And at the back, I know this is the wrong side here, but if you swing around here, I've got our soda stream. This is my pride and joy, and this is my secret weapon. Now, if you've ever stayed with us, chilled with us for a weekend, whatever the case may be, and I've cooked your steak, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is my grill. It's my charcoal griller. It's basically a big suitcase. You open him up, you throw your coals in there, hot coals in there, you cook your steak or whatever the case may be. I'm a bit of a novice. By no stretch of the imagination am I any good, but I love a good steak. And what do you reckon, babe? I cook good steak, eh? Hey? We go, all right, yeah. This drawer here, slides out. Kettle, fire lighters, butane tanks, milk frother, first aid kits. Fire lighters, fire striker, what have we got here? Flints. This is our cooker slash kitchen slash storage, whatever you want to call it. So basically it slides out like this. Now, again, this is another example of the way these trays are set up at a good height. So this slides out, it clicks in. The GCI tray tech kitchen then pops down. She folds out. This clips in, this slides out, clicks in, the sink pops out and pops down. Now, in here, you've got all your cutlery, plates, cups, etc., etc. Lots of room for absolutely everything. Then you've got your induction cooktop. Now, again, I'm taller, but wifey there behind the camera also uses this cooker and it's at a usable height. It's not ridiculous where you're up on a stool and I just plug my induction cooktop in the back here, switch it on and burn the sausages. Easy as that. That's the kitchen side. And let's just pay, it's also got your lights and things, but like just pay attention to GCI's attention to detail. Like you look at the way they finish things. Again, I'm a carpenter, builder, and attention to detail and finishing quality is everything in my industry. And then when you go through a canopy like this, she's old, like I've had to replace rivets, I've had to replace um, slides, but it's because I'm trashing it. I'm driving hard, it's a tourer and I'm using it as a four wheel drive in certain cases. 
but the gear lasts if you look after it and it's just immaculate. It's really, really nice. All right, I'll pack this up, then we'll move into the back of the canopy because the sun's going down. And wait, I didn't get myself a beer. Cheers. Into the back canopy. Now this is where the Isuzu comes above everything else. Payload and storage. I have got storage for days, absolute days. We call this our garage. They're in a thing that I stole off the missus's clothesline. I don't know what they're called, but it bloody works and I got in trouble for it, but I don't care because it works. Recently, we tried to winch the caravan out of a sticky situation. I had to use a max track underneath the jockey wheel. I've invested in a skid row. Uh, skid row skid. Caravan skid. Anyway, basically what happens is you put it under the jockey wheel, you can winch a caravan through whatever problem you've got going on. The boys also used to like to use it as a bobsled behind the bike, as you can see, because it's really scratched. Bow motor, 20 Merc, long shaft. Remove a couple of pins out. You slide the boat motor out. It drops down. You unwind the lugs, pop the motor off and throw it on the back of the boat and then vice versa to get it back into the into the truck. Newest uh, addition to the family is this little PW50. We were uh, recently at the Fink Desert Race. These are our diesel jerrys. I've got three of them uh, at the moment. If we ever go any more remote, I'll throw some more in. Um, but right now, that's plenty. Up the top here, we've got our, uh, got my spear gun mounted just on that rail blazer kit that you can get from bcf it's basically a little rubber mount that flicks up and over on itself and that stores up there no worries at all all right other side basically the same on the other side but this is basically an empty side so that we we go shopping we throw it all in the back it's just our little extra little bit that we pack things into this is a wet bag so kids are at the beach kids are out being grubby in the mud Kneeboard for behind the boat. This is our recovery bag. I need to recover myself a lot. Under that, I've just got a tactics box that I bought from Bunnings. In there, I have all my charcoal for my charcoal grill. I've got my kettle, which is not a household water kettle. It's like a charcoal kettle that you start the charcoals in. I think that's basically it for the canopies. And just in all my professionalism, I forgot to mention two things. First thing is GCI Traitech do this in a door protection, I guess you call it. In a web that's done beautifully, I might add, that protects if anything slides out and hits the canopy door in transit, it doesn't ding the outside of the door. So you know when you're driving along and you see canopy doors where something's flying around the inside of the canopy, hit the canopy door and there's a big ding in the sidewall, that stops that. And in my professionalism, I also forgot this side. Understory quite a lot. Tools, navigator shovels, axes, got a tow ball for when I fold the, uh, the boat trailer out from behind the caravan. Let's go have a beer, have question time. I'll just go through the basic questions that I constantly get asked and hopefully it helps you guys make decisions when it comes to ordering or buying something like this. Right, uh, let's get serious. A couple of questions written down. Why a truck over a Ram, over a Cruiser, over any other touring rig that you can get. Now, I'm not gonna go down the path of, this is better than you, this is better, I'm not playing these games. It's, it's a silly game. It comes down to personality, really. What suits you, what suits your family, what, what suits your touring style? Now, basically, the reason we purchased a truck, the, the dead reason, the main reason, is seven seats and space. We wanna have more kids on the road. We wanna be doing this for a long time. This platform, this truck, gives us the opportunity to grow as a family, continue touring, and not have to upgrade, not have to change. It boasts seven and a half ton GVM, 11 ton GCM, all the room for storage you could possibly think of, which is heaps of pros. There's heaps of pros with it. And I can get a boat, I can get a rooftop tent on, I can get firewood up the top, um, I can store, all my uh, life jackets I can get, bring towing gear for behind the boat, so tubes, uh, knee boards, etc. I can get a PW50 in the back. All these reasons sort of thing, and I'm still, I'm close, but I'm not over my weights. Plus all the water storage and everything you can also get. It lacks the power for towing that an American truck would have. It lacks the comfortability that American truck or, again, a cruiser would have. 
but to us it's all part of the adventure. Now the comfortability isn't bad and it's not something we ever complain about but it's a question that we get there's there's not a time where if I've ever apart from having that straight off the stratos chair there's not a time where the kids my wife or myself have ever gone oh this is no good I can't handle this or ever thought about it the only issue was I've got a bad back I needed to change that chair out um, even if it was a suspension seat another big factor would be the simplicity of the vehicle itself so it's basically a 79 series but a truck version is how I would describe it. So the whole inner working of, of the truck, I can work on myself if there's an issue. There's no crazy electrical things in there that I need to deal with. There's not heated seats, there's not reverse camera sensors, things flying everywhere that I don't understand. What is on this truck? Like, as I said, I'm a, I'm a carpenter. I don't, I'm not a mechanic, but what is on this truck? I have enough understanding of vehicles to be able to fix it if it breaks. And if I don't, the serviceability of, of an Isuzu is incredible. When you live like us, yes, you want good gear, but it's more important to have gear that's serviceable all around Australia. An F truck, a Ram, Silverado, to me, a brilliant, brilliant platforms to work off. But it scares me with the level of touring that we do that I'm not gonna have the serviceability that an Isuzu or a Land Cruiser would have. Isuzu also have their own roadside care. So anywhere you break down in Australia, they're coming to get you. So that's an added bonus as well. Another other added bonus of this truck would be the truck, let's say that we're, I'm at my capacity of GVM, seven and a half ton, which means with tow ball weight, I'd be at about seven ton, right? My caravan is four ton. So therefore, the truck is significantly heavier than what I'm towing. I don't know that caravan's there unless I look in my mirrors. I can't feel it. It's non-existent. It never pulls the truck. The wind doesn't drag the tr truck away. It's, it's as sturdy as it gets. Where I want the truck to go is where the caravan goes. If I brake, the caravan doesn't feel like it's pushing me down the road. The truck pulls it up. The caravan pulls itself up. It all just works the way it's supposed to because the truck is heavier. A downside, power whilst towing. Uh, if we see a hill and we've got the caravan on, truck panics, we're gearing down. There's been hills that we've been down in third gear on. So it do, again, that added power of an American truck or a Land Cruiser really, really does help. Do we ever struggle to fit in places, both car parks and caravan parks? Firstly, if you live in a city and you wanna set one of these things up for touring, you've done it all wrong. Like, we're never in major towns, we're off grid. This thing is set up to take us remote. Um, but in saying that, when we are in towns, when we're restocking, when we're doing these things, you just find a way. There's plenty of examples that we have of us just parking the truck in car parks and just making it work. Like we fit, we've never had an issue in a car park where we've gone up, oh, we've got to go home, can't fit here. Same in caravan parks. You call ahead, you tell them, hey, we're a big rig. They put you on a site that, that works. If they don't have the site that works, you pull up at a free camp down the road. It, to us, it's a non-issue and it's never been an issue. And I've actually never been turned away by a caravan park and never got the rig in to a place that never not got the rig into a place that we needed to go. Here's another one that I don't really care too much for, but everyone seems to ask me, and that's fuel economy. Now, I bought this rig with zero consideration for this. I genuinely just don't care. I'm here for the adventure, I'm not here for a fuel economy. But on the highway, we're looking at about towing 11, so at our capacity of 11 tonne, which we're pretty much at, we're probably doing on a highway 24 to 25 litres per 100. Um, recently we're up around the 27 and a half. That's mainly because I have not been off a dirt road in two months. I've dragged this thing through the Simpson Desert, dragged it up the Binns track, dragged it up the Udnadatta track, gone all, explored all around Lake Air. Basically put, it hasn't been easy going. So 27 liters per hundred to pull 11 ton around Australia, to me seems reasonable. To you, it might be stupid, I don't know. We've already covered the automatic versus manual or the AMT, the automated automated manual transmission versus the manual transmission. Look, just get a manual. <laughs> I, I hate the AMT, I really dislike it. It's the one thing on the truck that I would change if I could. I've already gone through why I don't like it and why would change but yeah I would strongly recommend if my recommendation means anything which it probably doesn't but if it does mean anything 
go a, go a manual. Mum's cracking a beer. Look out. I don't know. I'll put it in up here. Um, I'll put apps, I'll itemize everything for you so it'll all be up here in the top right hand corner. Go through it yourself. Why an Isuzu and not the other truck? So why not a Hino, a Fuso? Why do I get an Isuzu? Out of them all, Isuzu, well, main reason is they look the best. Debatable, but I think they look the best. Second reason is it has the biggest engine out of all three. We're pulling a heavy van. That one's a simple one to answer. Speed. So I get asked a lot, can I go 100 on the freeway? The answer is yes, but I feel like you're barking up the wrong tree. Any truck or owner will tell you that you hit a hill and you've got to gear down, especially when you're under load or you've got load on the back. We're hauling a heavy payload compared to a car. We don't have the power a car has. Sitting on a highway, we can sit on a hundred on a normal flat highway, but if we get to any sort of a hill, we're gearing down just like any other truck under load. The height, overall, I think I'm about 335, 3.35, or to be comfortable. I'm not quite sure of the exact, but that's very, very close. Future plans. So I do have a little bit planned. We're gonna get through this NT trip that we're doing. We're gonna head back down the WA coast and I'm already in talks with a couple of companies to uh, expand. <laughs> we'll be keeping the caravan, we'll be keeping the truck, but I'll be altering this back section of the truck. I'm not gonna tell you what to because you already copy me enough. Righto, I've had one too many beers. Thanks for watching. I'm packing up. Uh, and I might even set up the rooftop tent here and sleep away from the kids for the night. Huh. Cheers, guys. I, uh, I really appreciate you guys watching.